Welcome friends to what is our third in the Advent series. Doesn't it go quickly? Today there is good news for us to behold. Those who feared that they were worth little to God have found blessing in God's sight. For in the mercy and love of God the blind shall see, the lame shall walk without pain, those who could not hear shall be blessed with hearing, and there shall be peace. God's mercy and love is poured out for our parched souls. Behold, the Lord's compassion is with God's people. Believe in the power of God in all things. Amen. And it's time to light our third Advent candle as we make our journey towards Christmas. This third candle is a symbol of joy on what is known as Gaudete or Rejoice Sunday. A light shining out as a sign of joy. God's joy dances in the darkness and draws us near. Let's pray. Lord, we come not just to sing hymns. Nor are we here just to say prayers or to listen to your word. We're here to praise the living God and do so with every fibre of our being. Amen. Bank the Baptist's cry announces that the Lord is nigh. Awake and hearken, for he brings glad tidings from the King of Kings. Then tends me every hour from sin, make straight the way of God Loving God, we praise you that in Christ all our ends can become new beginnings and all our weaknesses can be clothed in strength. 
Loving God, we praise you that in Christ our times of emptiness can be filled with hope and our brokenness find the only source of peace and wholeness. Loving God, we praise you that in Christ this damaged world can be restored and its prisoners of injustice, poverty, addiction, abuse or hate can find the freedom for which they long. Lord, we praise you that in Christ the joy of heaven bursts into our days and hours and that by your Holy Spirit the things of creation find their centre and true purpose. Lord, we praise you that in Christ our sins can be forgiven and our lives can receive a purpose vast and wide. So once again, we come to seek your forgiveness, that we might be free to serve you and live out your love. Patient Lord, we're far from perfect. We so often choose to do the things we know are wrong, the selfish things, the hurtful things. We so often choose not to do the things we know are right, the loving things, the kind things. Forgive us, renew us and strengthen us with your joy that we may serve you well and live lives that declare your good news. Even now, yes, even in this very moment, God comes to us bringing hope, bringing forgiveness, bringing freely offered forgiveness as a gift to us. Let us receive these gifts with joy for our sins are forgiven and we are set free. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our scripture reading today is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, and verses 2 to 11. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to them, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offence at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out in the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A 
prophet. Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. So as we come to reflect on those words, let's pray. Lord, as you speak to us now by the power of your spirit through the words we've heard and the thoughts we share, give us sureness and faith in our hearts as we look to, hold on to and receive again the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever had one of those worrying moments when You're in the middle of doing something out and about and suddenly you think, did I lock the front door? How can you be 100% certain? If there's any hint of doubt, it can be very unsettling. I once managed to lock the front door of my house and leave it in such a way that the door was open The lock was locked, and when my neighbour saw it, they were unable to actually shut it, but thankfully they pulled it too, and I returned home in time. Have you ever had an attack of doubt of any sort? Everything's going fine, then something happens that knocks you for six. Am I doing the wrong thing? Have I upset someone? Have I upset God? Have I got it all wrong? It's even happened to me when I've been preaching or playing the organ. You suddenly realise it's me doing this and you have an inner wobble. Doubt often comes when we're expecting certain things to happen and then something else happens in its place. Or things don't go according to the however well laid plans that we may have set down. John the Baptist was hugely successful in what he did. And because of him, many of God's people turned back to God and were baptised. He had many followers. He was a very active uh, person in what were exciting times. People had been longing to hear from God and his voice cut through it all. But now he's in prison. He's upset Herod. Because of his marriage to Herodias, which is against Jewish law, and he'd spoken out and told the truth. He'd been there for some time in that lonely cell. He knew about Jesus and he had heard some of the things that he was doing. But now suddenly, after all that certainty and determination, he's racked with doubt. Had he backed the wrong horse? Was Jesus actually the Messiah? Of course, John had known Jesus from birth. John was Jesus' cousin. He knew right from the start that Jesus was no ordinary fellow. John baptised him. He saw the Spirit of God descend and he heard the voice of the Father say, This is my own dear Son and I am pleased with him. John had heard the voice of God declare that Jesus was his son. Surely that was enough to convince him. But now, John wasn't so sure. Perhaps things weren't going as quickly or dramatically as John had expected. Maybe he felt that Jesus needed to be doing things differently. Many folk expect God to work in a certain way. And when God doesn't, they lose heart. They doubt and may even fall away. Those folk are the ones Jesus is hinting at when he says, God will bless everyone who doesn't reject me because of what I do. 
Jesus then reassures John that just because things aren't going the way he expected, the way John expected, that God had it all in hand. He encouraged him not to give up his hope in Jesus the Lord. Jesus sends John's disciples back with reassurance and with evidence. And what evidence? Great things were happening. Healing, transforming things. They may not have been the things that John was expecting. God's plans are so often different to what we expect. And certainly they were different to what people were expecting of the promised Messiah. But these are the things that the prophet Isaiah spoke of. A list Blind will see, the lame will walk, the sick will be healed, the deaf will hear, the dead raised to life, and the pinnacle of it all, the poor are hearing the good news. Friends, the poor have always been at the heart of God's plan. A sign of a healthy society is one which cares for the poor. Jesus declares, those in poverty are hearing the good news of what God's kingdom is offering. That future hope to which we all look with longing. There's a real sense of joy in all that's going on. People are being transformed. People are being set free, giving hope for the future. Maybe not in this life, but in the world to come. Have you ever been asked to describe someone? Because I'm pretty poor at remembering names. You can imagine the sort of conversation that goes on between my wife and I. It's like a game of guess who, where she tries to get me to remember a face by describing and associating different things with that person until finally the penny drops. As John's followers were going away, Jesus spoke to the crowd about John. Here's his beautiful description, giving further encouragement for John. Jesus talks about John. What were the people expecting? Tall grass blown by the wind? Somebody weak? No, John was not easily swayed. That's why he's in prison. He wouldn't compromise the truth. Was he dressed in fine clothes? No, he wore the attire of a humble prophet. But he was more than a prophet. He was the last of the old covenant prophets, the messenger preparing the way for the new. If the king were to come to visit your church or your house, I would imagine that a great deal of preparation would have to take place. There'd be cleaning and wiping and dusting, decorations and flowers put up, maybe a bit of paint here and there, and perhaps the new toilet seat that is mythically thought about. When we're preparing the way for Jesus, as John did, John knew that he was part of the story. And Jesus said that John was important, but his message was only the beginning, the preparation. I tell you that not, no one ever born on this earth is greater than John the Baptist, but whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John. John represented the old covenant not the new, the new which Jesus had come to bring in. Jesus says that the kingdom he's come to establish is better than anything the earth has to offer. The joys of this life don't last. They come and they go. But what Jesus has promised will last forever. Joy without measure. The joy of knowing God 
and entrusting all to God. It used to be that wonderful song we occasionally sang in Sunday school. The joy of the Lord is my strength. This, of course, quotes the prophet Isaiah. We were then encouraged not just to sing, but to jump or even dance for joy at the promised news. If we're looking for true joy, lasting joy, eternal joy that can strengthen and encourage us as we face the troubles of this life and look ahead to the wonders of the next, something with which we can be certain our only joy will be found in the Lord God. Advent is a bit like tuning in the radio. I'm sure you've all had trouble finding the channel, perhaps after someone else has unhelpfully adjusted the tuning knob. Tuning in our thoughts, our minds, our hearts to God and letting God tune our expectations to his will, guiding us through with the Spirit transforming us in faith, that we may know the joy in knowing Jesus, God's greatest gift. Amen. Knowing that our God loves us and listens, let's bring our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's pray. Lord, your church is full of possibility and yet so vulnerable. It's so urgently needed by our world and yet so often it seems weak. Strengthen each member of the body and increase our sense of expectation so that we may live with your life. Father God, bring joy to this world. Lord, in this constantly changing world with its shifting values and fragile ecological balance, Root us deeply in your unchanging nature of mercy, goodness, faithfulness and love. Father God, bring joy to this world. Lord, we welcome you into our homes, our streets and our communities. Where we are blind to your presence, give us sight. In the ordinary and the remarkable, help us to recognise our true and living God. Father God, bring joy to this world. Lord, all the needs of your children are known to you. With God-given love, we bring to mind those who are suffering physically, spiritually or emotionally, that they may find you there beside them in these dark and painful times. Father God, bring joy to this world. Lord, to whom eternity is natural. Help us to realise that time is not the whole story and welcome into your kingdom those who have lived this life in your company and have now passed through death. Comfort those of us here whose hearts are heavy with grieving. Father God, bring joy to this world. Lord, and awaken us to expect you with joy. We give you thanks for your tender parenting and your unfailing patience with us. And in a time of quiet, let's offer to God our own thoughts and prayers. Lord, receive our prayers and answers as your will directs, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hark the glad sound, the Saviour comes, the Saviour promised long. Let every Oh.
Let's pray for God's blessing. Let us go on now with good news and prepare the way for the Lord. Let's wait patiently and not grumble against one another, but encourage one another. Let's be strong and not fear. And may God come quickly to us. May Christ Jesus give us everlasting joy and gladness. And may the Holy Spirit Spirit, strengthen our hearts and lead us on God's way. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, blessed Trinity, be upon us and remain with us always. Amen.